Is it worth waking up the monster under the bed for a midnight snack? I know every creek in kitchen's path, every floorboard that needs step to prevent breaking nighttime silence. It's 3 a.m. and every volume sounds violent. I'm in bed quietly contemplating Sufjan Stevens on my headphones. Why do you cry? There is a constant worry where my comfort used to live. My therapist says it's my reptile brain taking over. I didn't even know I had such a thing. She said I should always remember my fear is not real, that I'm mentally ill-equipped to live in this reality, but how can apathy ever be the answer to anything? Despite her best intentions, she cannot begin to understand why I worry, why superstition is my superpower. What she doesn't know is that there is a reality to our anxieties that we don't dare whisper. That darkness does hide in plain sight, that silence and paranoia are the party tricks that keep us alive, I worry, all the time. It is the first line of defense between myself and their hands that feel like violence, and their lips that taste like violence, because I love, because I exist, because I am not something they understand, and I am not something she understands. So. I left therapy after two sessions. I'm not saying we should sacrifice our hearts for our head, our mental health for a revolution that isn't coming yet, but I wonder if fear is just a symptom of this violent world we live in. Self-care only goes so far when your symptoms are a sign of injustice. It's useless to say we should not be afraid when every street is a crime scene to our kind. I am scared and sad and tired and ready to stop hiding behind these lies only because the other option the thought that we might be right is too terrifying. It is never too late to stop starving. The monster under your bed lies dormant as you watch it. You are not the boy who cried wolf, but Cassandra, who spoke truth but wasn't believed. And that's the real fear, isn't it? Thank you. Since then, I've gotten a lot happier, <laughs> and that's really nice. Um, it's also not, you don't always have to be happy. I think that's a bit of an overrated thing of like constantly striving for happiness. I, I live with mental illness, and that means I'm not always happy, and I've learned to kind of be happy about that too. It's just fine.